Okay, Spencer, I'm going to make a video for you that's going to kind of go over um, the questions that you missed on that test. And <clears throat> after you watch it, let me know that you watched it, and I will then reset the test for you. So you're going to see me do some writing on the screen while I talk. So a number is irrational if it's under a square root and it's not a perfect square. So irrational numbers are decimals that can't be written as fractions because they go on forever and they don't repeat. So pi is a really common example of an irrational number. We know that pi goes on forever and it also doesn't repeat. But when you get to square roots, you have to pick the square root that is not a perfect square. So 9 times 9 is 81, 13 times 13 is 169, and 12 times 12 is 144. So those all actually end up being rational numbers because they are what we call perfect squares. 156, if you type this into a calculator, most standard function calculators have a square root button. You might have to search around for it, but if you take the square root of 156, your calculator is going to give you some long drawn out decimal. Mine says 12.4899 blah blah blah. It goes on forever. Um, so that is what makes 156 the irrational number. After each problem I have to erase the screen so you'll see the ink will now disappear in the, as I scroll down. So to find the distance between two points, uh, there is a distance formula. The distance formula says subtract the y's, or subtract the y's, subtract the x's, and then take their square roots. So I'm going to write the distance formula out for you. You probably have that from um, hopefully the notes you took in the lesson. But it's take x1 minus x2 and square it. Then you add to that y1 minus y2 also squared. <clears throat> the x1 and the x2 all that means is you have a first ordered pair and you have a second ordered pair. Whoops, that should be a 1 and then x2, y2. The little 1's and 2's just indicate we're talking about two different ordered pairs. So if we plug in the first we get negative 10 minus negative 5 and be careful with your subtracting negatives. We're going to change that to adding the opposite. Plus, y1 is negative 8 minus 4. We're also going to square that, and the whole thing is still being square rooted. Negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5, and you're going to square negative 5, you're going to get 25. We're going to add to that negative 8 minus 4 that's negative 12. Negative 12 squared is 144. Now when you add 25 plus 144, you get 169. And when you square root 169, you get 13. If you don't, uh, if you're not sure on your calculator where the square root function is, um, you can use the one on your laptop, on your desktop. Um, the square root button is right here. It looks kind of like a check mark. So if you're not sure how to find the square root, you're going to type in 169 and then hit the square root button and it will tell you the square root of 13. Other calculators, um, some of the fancier TI calculators, if you have one of those, <clears throat> you have to hit the square root button first and then type the number underneath it and then hit enter. Okay, so let's erase the screen. Number six is asking about rational. So this is kind of the opposite of that other one you missed. Because it's asking about rational numbers, now you're looking for the perfect square. So again, these are all crazy decimals, except for the third one. The square root of 121 is 11. And again, you should have access to a calculator on your desktop, so these end up being pretty easy. If you type in the square root of 98 on a calculator, you get 9.8. 9.8994, and that one goes on. The square root of 164 is 12.8062, and that one goes on. And the square root of 150 is 12.2474, that one also goes on. So if you're not sure what the perfect squares are, use the calculator for these. Again, rational means it's a perfect square. 
you should get a whole number when you take the square root. If it's irrational, you're looking for the non-perfect square. Okay, the next two are both distance formulas, so it looks like maybe you were having some trouble with the distance formula. So again, the distance formula is this giant square root where you subtract the x's and then square that number. You subtract the y's, you square that number, then you add them together. After you add them together, you have to take the big square root. So again, x1, y1, x2, y2. So x1 minus x2, that's 0 minus negative 8. Be careful with your signs here, so you have to change that to adding the opposite. y1 is 9, so then it's 9 minus negative 4. Add the opposite again, square that one, and again it's still under a big square root. 0 plus 8 is 8, 8 squared is 64. <clears throat> plus 9 plus 4 is 13. 13 squared is 169. Now you have to still square root all that, but you have to add it first. Order of operations, a square root's kind of like a parenthesis. So you have to clean up everything underneath here first before you can square root it. So 64 plus 169 is 233. 233 is not a perfect square, but that doesn't matter. You can still square root it. You're just going to get a decimal. And here my calculator gives me 15.264, and you can see that rounds to 15.3 if they're rounding to the nearest tenth, like it says in the directions. If you'd like to, maybe pause this video here. I know you can see the answer for the number 12, but if you pause the video and try to work it out to see if you can get the answer for number 12. So I'm just going to use the formula up here. I'm not going to rewrite the formula again, but it's x1, y1 x2, y2. So under my big square root, x1 minus x2. Again, we're subtracting a negative, so we change that to adding a positive. 12 minus 7 squared. So this is 11. 9 plus 2 is 11. Square 11, you get 121. Plus 12 minus 7 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So now I'm taking the square root of 121 plus 25, which is a square root of 146. 146 is not a perfect square. So you get 12.083, which rounds to 12.1. So let's clear that screen as we scroll down some more. Okay, now we're talking about a right triangle. So this is the Pythagorean theorem. They're giving you the lengths of two of the sides, and you have to find the length of the third side. 13 and 14 are the same type of problem, just with different numbers. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What you need to remember is that the hypotenuse is always c. And you can see that in both problems you're given the hypotenuse. That number has to go over here for C. When they give you a leg measurement, it doesn't matter if you call it A or B. I usually plug in for A just because it's first. So if I plug the 20 in for A, that's 20 squared plus B squared equals 25 squared. 20 squared is 400. 25 squared is 625. Now it's an equation, you're just solving for b squared. So we're going to subtract 400. That's going to give me b squared equals 225. But I have to find b. I'm not trying to find b squared, I'm trying to find b. So I have to square root both sides because square rooting, something that's squared, they cancel each other out. So the square root of 225 is 15, so that's how we get 15 meters. Similarly on number 14, they gave us a leg of 34, so I'm going to put that in for A, plus, I don't know the other leg, or the B squared, equals 37 squared. So 34 squared, I'm using a calculator, is 1,156 
I still don't know the b squared. 37 squared is 1,369. So I'm going to subtract 1156 from both sides. Then we get b squared equals 1369 minus 1156. It's 213. Again, this is not my answer. I need to square root both sides. That's the opposite of squaring. They are inverse operations. So I square root 213, and I get 14.59, which you can see rounds to 14.6. Now, if they give you a Pythagorean problem and they don't give you the hypotenuse, that means you wouldn't know the C, and you would have this part be your variable, and you would have plugged the other side length in for B squared. And that's it. So remember, if I went too fast through the video, um, you can pause it, you can rewind it, you can re-watch re re the parts um, that maybe were confusing to you. I also notice up at the top, um, it looks like you only spent 2 minutes and 53 seconds on this test. Um, I'm not sure I could take the test that fast, so I don't know if you were just guessing as you kind of flew through it. Um, but definitely try to slow down and take your time. If you have any other questions, let me know. Um, and again, once you've watched this video, also let me know that, and I'll reset the test for you.